All right. Thanks for joining us here on the podcast. I am your host, Mike Cunningham, and I'm super psyched, man. I just love meeting new people. And, you know, as an old JUCO coach myself, I love JUCO coaches. So help me welcome the wise, the wonderful from Fort Scott Community College, Mr. Philip Redrick. Philip, how are you, sir? I'm good. Good. Thanks for having me. Uh, man, I'm stoked. I'm very happy, actually. If you're watching us on YouTube, uh, you know, your style, you have like a signature style and it's that hat, man. And so <laughs> I was really hopeful. I was like, I hope he wears the hat because oh, I, I just love, I love that style. Has that been like your style for like ever, yeah. like since a kid? No, it's been lately, yes, sir. It's been my style lately, yes, sir. I love it. You're, you're so, so nice to calling me, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, a dirty juco coach like you man i was in neosho <laughs> county so uh yeah yeah so we'll uh we, we can cut that sir stuff man we're all <laughs> all good hey uh, super it. super excited to have you here you know one of my favorite ways for people to get on the podcast there's a lot of different ways we kind of schedule our guests uh but about a year ago and that should ring alarm bells if you're thinking about uh nominating someone it takes over a year to get on the <laughs> podcast we only get 52 a, a year guys yeah. so uh you were actually nominated by mark and I think he's over at Butler Community College yep. and yes, your assistant, Jafet, and I'm going to, Jafet, I know you're listening. I'm going to screw this up. Forgive me. Molineras. Oh, I think I nailed it. Yeah, he, he did pretty good. Pretty oh, good. Oh, wait, he's, he just said pretty good. He's, be, he's being nice. Uh, but it's so cool when people think so highly of others that they would nominate mm -hmm. them for the show and that the show has, it means something that to be nominated for. So uh, that's got to feel pretty good, right? I mean, like some yeah. people... I guess, I guess I do a little something, right? I guess, you know? Yeah. Jafet's like, well, he's my head coach, so. <laughs> Pays the bill, right? <laughs> right, right, right. What's your relationship with Mark? Why would he? Uh, he, was the, he was here first. Um, when I started the program, he was my first assistant I had here. And so. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So well, he, he started with me, so. I like that because he has nothing to gain from this. And Jeff, you know, I'm kidding when, you know, I'm playing up the, <laughs> you have something to gain to nominate him. Uh, but no, that's really cool, man. That says a lot about you. And I'm excited to kind of dig into that and see why, why, why are you nominatable? Why, why did people yeah. nominate you? So, <laughs> so Philip, let's, uh, let's get in our way back machine here, man. Uh, where does track start for you, man? Where does, uh, where do you kind of start getting into track and field? Um, it was, I was act, as a kid, I used to act out, you know, I needed something to do. Um, as a kid, I didn't have my mom and dad in my life, so I was always acting out, trying to find attention, and I found that I was actually pretty fast. So field day, in fourth grade, I did field day, and I was beating everybody, and so they actually kicked me out of field day because I was hurting everybody's self-esteem. I didn't, I didn't know that was a thing, but yes, and so <laughs> well, I became fast, and I realized I was pretty good at it. Now, that's kind of funny, actually, because we talk about <laughs> today and i know you're not that old uh yeah. but we talk about today's kids and how you know fragile and all that uh -huh. kind of stuff but here's back when you were a kid and it was the parents that were fragile not the kid yeah. i know the kids got their yeah. quote unquote feelings hurt but it was the parents that were like get them out of here he's certain yeah. uh it's interesting that you know maybe all this stuff we talk about kids actually maybe started sorry back, back to yeah yeah I, I love when people complain about today's kids because i'm like you know who raised them right it's the parents <laughs> exactly like you're just complaining about yourself basically so yeah. where, where, where are you growing up where where, where are you i'm from arlington, arlington texas yeah so, okay. um, Oklahoma, uh, arlington Seguin high school um michael murphy was my high school coach yeah. and my stuff in, in my um actually junior high coach he followed me he couldn't get enough of me <laughs> yeah well you must not have been acting out that bad then if someone's just following you around <laughs> exactly. that's good um, so, I, you know, I'm just, um those kids, i was wanting attention so yeah. i got into track because i, I never want to be forgotten that was my main thing um, so my auntie ad basically adopted me, my grandma first, and then my aunt adopted me. Mm -hmm. So I never want to be forgotten again. I was like, my mom and dad didn't want me at the beginning. So I make sure nobody forgets my name. So I started running track. And um, everywhere I went, I wanted to break records. So it was a, that's why I was, that's what I was motivated for, really, to show everybody that I can be somebody. Was that in, or, or, I mean, we're talking about, you know, pretty sensitive topic here, you know, family. Yeah, and yeah. By the way, I grew up no dad as well and bounced uh -huh. between mom and homes and all that kind of stuff. Um but you know, that, that sentiment of like, I don't want to be forgotten. Was that a, yeah. like, when you talk about fourth grade uh, field day, was it mm -hmm. right off the bat fourth grade or was it like more like high school? Maybe when you started getting some attention, like from maybe colleges or breaking records, et cetera. It was like high school and then college. Mm. And I started getting more attention and started being pretty good at it. Hmm. And so what events are you specializing in high school? Um, I was actually a 200 runner in high school. My coach didn't let me do the hundred. He said I was, I was, I was a two, four guy and I was too tall for the hundred. That's what he said at the time. Uh, this was this was pre-bolt i assume then yeah it's pre-bolt <laughs> no actually it was about the same almost the same time actually exactly. um so it was um but no i did 200 in high school because in texas you only can do three events and so i was based on a four one four by two and then 200 meters even relays i didn't know that yeah yes yeah, so relays count so yeah 
we had uh, Shelton Irvin on the podcast uh, okay. down from Summer Creek High School in Houston. Mm-hmm. He was the uh, USFCA Boys National Coach of the Year. And he okay. kind of laid out the Texas high school as far as like how to qualify and stuff. I didn't know that three events, and that includes relays, because I know yeah. we, we double points in, in Texas for the relays. So I thought yeah, maybe right. those were like like three events, and then you could also do relays, but it's three, including relays. Three, including relays. So that's why you see most kids in high school don't have that many open events because they're worried about the relays in Texas. And so that actually hurts them in recruiting sometimes. Oh, that's interesting because, you know, yeah. on Twitter where, you know, I basically live, right? Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of talk, uh, you know, kind of snarky talk a little bit to be real yeah. frank. I mean, I kind of get it as a former college coach. I, I kind of understand it, but there's a little bit to me, sometimes a little bit too much snarkiness with it, but uh, they talk about like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to see your relay splits recruit, yeah. you know, yeah. it doesn't mean what's your open. And it's like, well, some maybe don't get the opportunity to yeah. run. Yeah, open. They yeah, they don't get it. Wow. Interesting. Okay. So you're running the two and the relays. Uh, mm-hmm. What do you, what do you t- talk to me about your high school coach? What kind of you have a good coach, bad coach? If he's bad. Um, I, I had a good coach. He was mostly, mostly like a, a father figure to me. Hmm. So I, and I have my dad. So he was more of a mentor, a father figure to me. Wasn't really, he was my, he was my sprint coach, but he was my head coach. Like I said, Michael Murphy was my head coach. Um, so he was always there for me, no matter what. Um, great guy. He had hard to go. Um, my sprint coach was coach Fleming. Um, he was pretty good. His son was Jamel Fleming. He went to the NFL, played for the Cardinals. A little plug for him. <laughs> and um, our relay team actually went to state, and so it was pretty cool. Um, mm. I ran 21-17 in high school, so I wasn't, wasn't that bad. And then in summer track, I ran 21-04, so I was pretty pretty decent. Wow. You know, it's it's actually a little-known secret. I actually ran 21-04 once. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. It was in the 100, though, so I'm not sure how oh, that yeah. correlates, <laughs> but, I, but I did it. Dang it. I, you can't take it yeah. away from me. That yes, actually sir. that actually probably was my 110 meter hurdle PR. Was probably what that's like the you know I always do that joke about the you know I ran it once and it's always the event lower but mm-hmm. I really do that's how bad I was in the hurdles in high school. I bet that was my PR. Mm-hmm. Uh, I bet actually I'd probably be pretty proud if that was my PR because I was pretty pretty trash. So uh, what are you what kind of what kind of track athlete are you in high school? And what I mean by that is, you know, we talk about, we kind of put these big blankets that, you know, kids don't know the track athletes that are out there. They don't study the history and all that kind of stuff. Were you kind of a guy who knew what was going on in the track world or were you kind of centered in on, on your track world? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a geek. I'm a nerd for track. So I knew everything about track. I'm a person that Googles, um, researches all my competition, the history. Um, I'm a big Michael Johnson fan. So I was a Michael Johnson. That was my idol. Um, if you look at my college pictures in my photos, you see me with the gold spikes and I'm holding them up when I won. So it was, it, he was my, he was the guy, he's the goat to me. He would always be the goat. Um, I never thought about going to break 200 meter record 20, 1932, but I mean, obviously you saying both did it, but um, <clears throat> he was, he's from Dallas as well. So the same area I'm from. And um, he was the guy. That's awesome. So what year, what, what's your senior year in high school? What year is that? 2006. Okay, because you were talking about Googling, so I was like, okay, well, that's got to be in the 2000s, uh, oh, yeah. but, but MJ was your your hero, so yeah. I mean, that's 94, or I'm sorry, 96-ish, uh, mm-hmm. but but so yeah, you're a nerd on it in regards to like the history, you knew yeah. who he was. Yes, and um, so at the same time, Jeremy Warner was basically, I think he was in college at the time, we were from the same city, um, so he went to Arlington Lamar, I went to Arlington Seguin, but Arlington Seguin wasn't even in school yet when he was in school, so that shows you how old Jeremy Warner is, if he hears this, he knows he's oh. old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know Jeremy pretty well now. <laughs> That's shots right there, man. He's going so, to he's gonna, he's gonna nominate himself to get on here just to rebut that. <laughs> yes, yes, he is. Um, but he was another guy I looked up to. I was like, man, this kid in artist, and he was killing it. And I was like, I'm coming up. I was like in the sixth grade when he was in senior year in high school. So I knew what he was as well. And I wanted to break all his records as well. I, that, was, that was my goal. And so I, I always look up to people like that. And I want to be like them or try to beat them. How'd that work out for you? Uh, I did all right. You know, he was kind of an Olympian. So, you know, I didn't get that. <laughs> He deserves those records. Yeah, he's, he's the guy. He's the guy. So what were you thinking for college uh, in regards to studying and a career Where were in your mm-hmm. in high school? What were you thinking for the next step there? So I'm a diehard Longhorn fan. So I'm thinking I'm going to Texas. That's, that's what I thought. Um, and I wanted to be an architect. Some some reason I wanted to be an architect. I don't know why, but I was big in that. Oh. And math, I didn't know you had to do math a lot to do that. <laughs> so big, big in architect, but not so big in math. Yeah, yeah. I was I like, what? Really? <laughs> um, and so, yeah, um, but I realized, that, um, as some kids do realize, um, as freshmen and sophomore years, you actually got to take school serious. And so I didn't take it that serious. Um, and my coach told me from day one, you got to take school seriously. But me being a superstar as a freshman, I was on varsity as a freshman, um, as a freshman um, in high school in Texas, to make it that far, um, you have an ego. I'm not going to lie to you. As a sprinter, you have to have an ego anyways. 
but I was one of those cocky kids that always been fast my whole life. And so working hard and doing stuff came natural to me. So I didn't have to work hard, basically. And everything came natural. So I, I actually just played around my first two years in college, high school. It, same thing in practice, I played around and I didn't really understand what, what I had until, you know, my senior year. Huh. And then it was too late. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. You know, at our age, we have perspective, right? We can look behind mm -hmm. and see the mistakes we made as a fresh off and in yeah. high school and even in practice. It's like, man, if I would have just taken it just 10% yeah. more serious, where, where yeah. could it have taken me? Interesting. Exactly. So you, you, you're you long diehard Longhorn fan. Uh, mm -hmm. Half the people listening are yelling at you right now for that fact alone. Uh, so okay. where, where did you end up, you know, with all the mistakes and stuff through high school, where, where did you end up going for school? So I still had a couple of offers, North Texas, TCU, but um, <clears throat> couldn't get in. Mm -hmm. um, I pulled my hamstring my senior year too as well, so it hurt my scholarships. Um, so actually, it was like August, and after after summer track, I was actually had nowhere to go, literally nowhere to go. And I'm one of the fastest kids inside of Texas, so not just Texas, the nation, because I got top eight in the national AAU nationals. Wow. And so I'm sitting at home with nowhere to go. And the school called me, called Allen County Community College, and I'm thinking, Coach DeGrado, if you know him, Vince DeGrado, he's the coach there. Um, he called me, and said, "What you doing right now?" I said, "Sitting on my bed." <laughs> he said, "Do you want to come to college?" I said, "I guess." He want to come to junior college. I was like, "What is junior college?" I'm, I'm, you know who I am? I'm Phil Redrick. And um, <laughs> that's what I told him. I was like, I don't even know who you are. And um, he said, well, just come on. I'll get a scholarship. Come on down. And next week, I was heading down to Iola, Kansas. <laughs> and um, for, when I'm, they dropped me off, and I just sat there and cried on the bed. I was like, I'm a D1 athlete. I'm a D1 athlete. And little did I know, it was the best decision of my life. Wow. And that's so super interesting. I love that you went to a JUCO and you coach it like you, you have that kind mm -hmm. of like as you're recruiting you can draw on that experience yeah. of you know a kid from the Dallas area that mm -hmm. goes to Iola Kansas Chanute can I mean mm -hmm. these are the middle of nowhere Great Bend can I mean these literally are small towns yeah, in yeah, Kansas town. and you kind of you look around and you're like what am I doing here yeah, I, did that. I was like this is crazy I cried literally for the first week I just cried on my bed like I'm not supposed to be here but like I said I told you it was the best decision of my life it's the best decision what, what makes you say that? Um, I had to grow up as a person, as an athlete, as a as a as a man, as a student. I had to grow up. Um, so junior college helped me grow up. Um, you, you can't depend on anybody in junior college. It's basically you and your coaches in the trenches. <laughs> and so um, I, I um I had a thing. I had a um I have a little ego sometimes. I'm like I'm not calling home for help. I'm gonna figure it out myself. So I never call home for help. I just figured it out, and it made me grow up as a person. What did you think? One of the bigger transitions from high school to to junior college, at least the junior colleges that I'm familiar with, the Kansas Jayhawk system, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe some of the other ones as well. I'm not real familiar with the California system, but um, but you're in a really small town that there is nothing going on in, yeah, that, in, that, going on. in that college and its athletes, mm -hmm. specifically if you have a football team and basketball, et cetera, but that, everybody knows who you are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you are the outsider because you, you didn't grow up in, in that little town of Kansas. Mm -hmm. What um, like how, how did you adjust because you, you talked about you know being on your own in regards to family but you know you had coaches and athletes mm -hmm. like you you have kind of two decisions to make there you can you can still go there and screw around and flunk out and exactly back home right or you can say okay well this is a second chance for me let's mm -hmm. buckle down athletically and academically how did yeah. you come to that buckle down decision um getting my butt kicked my first meet <laughs> that's what helped me buckle down again I, I still had this ego like I'm Phil Redrick I'm gonna show you I can come to college and be anybody I want to be so my first semester I still played around I, I'm still a I'm still a rookie I'm still a freshman so I played around my first semester got to the first meet and I got my butt whooped from yeah, I will I, I will state 60 meters I ran a 717 my first meet in the 60 and I'm thinking to myself what just happened I'm Phil Redrick and it didn't matter they, everybody's good there and I was like wow let me try this working hard thing. Let me try to focus and lock in and working hard and listen to my coaches. And, and, and the rest what, of history. And what were you studying at that time? Or was it just gen ed? Just yeah, general studies right there. I wanted to study. Um, then after I got there, I wanted to study communications. So um, so me, I like to I like challenges. So my biggest fear is communication. I'm talking in front of crowds. So I'm actually majored in communication because I wanted to face my fears. That's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> you, you know, math is my fear and sound like it, I don't know if it was your fear but maybe not so good like I would but you didn't want to face that fear you're like I'll, I'll go find yeah. a different one I find a different fear yes sir. that's a smart decision <laughs> so, yeah. so how did it go those two years I, I assume you spent two years that's pretty traditional two years there yeah. at Allen I was I spent one at Allen and I transferred over to um, Neosho 
Oh, you did. Yeah, so I went to Transport to Neosho, um, where I have all the school records there as well. I have Allen County and then Neosho. Um, um, Vince DeGrado left, so I had um, changed coaches. And so, you know, that kind of hurt my feelings. As the former head coach at Neosho, you said, I've got all the school records there, meaning yeah, put it out I, there. I don't have any anymore, <laughs> is what you're telling me. Okay, all right, I, I got it. This, uh, you know, there's a lot of shots fired in this uh, episode, and we're like 16 <laughs> minutes in here. Holy cow. <laughs> Uh, how did you like Chanute, man? Like, I didn't realize uh, you were, lived in Chanute. That's, you know, I, yeah. I'd spent my one year uh, service there. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was actually pretty cool. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not a person to go out a lot. So I stayed in my dorm and did, you know, did what I had to do. Um, but it's a nice town. I got my degree there and um, everything else was history. So it was a good, good town, good people, mm-hmm. good teachers, good administration. So it was nice. Did they have the track when you were there? We had the high school track. Yeah, that's where we went to. Oh, yeah, yeah, the high school. They, they got their own track or community track. I can't remember. Okay. It must have been right after you. So it hasn't been all that long mm-hmm. yeah. uh, for that. Yeah, but we used to go this run down high school track. <laughs> it's not, not good, man. <laughs> and oh, cold. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you get, so you were on the track team. Did you, you got, you practiced in the basketball gym. Did you, you have, know, they had a spot up there with a, with a little strip of, um, mm-hmm. strip, strip of track. Yeah, we did that. Yeah. We did a lot of block work up there. Did you have the did you have the midnight time slot or the six a.m. time slot? Because baseball, oh, we have 6 yeah, ba- baseball gets the 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 cherry spot. He gets whatever he <laughs> oh, yeah. wants. You know, he's, he's been there forever. And the coach, <laughs> that's so cool, man. I love that the uh, that little common connection there, Chanute, Kansas. Yeah. There, there ain't many people that have that connection. <laughs> no, 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 no. So you end up getting your degree from Neo Show, the Panthers, yeah. baby. I love it. Yeah. Um, and what? So what? What are you? What are you thinking? Not only where to go, where to transfer to for your four year, but also uh, continuing on with your communications degree? Mm-hmm. So yes, um, I want to continue with my communication degree. So I did um, broadcast journalism. So I got into broadcast journalism. So I'm a broadcast journalism major. Um, I had offers from U of H, Texas Tech, um, Nebraska, University of Washington. And again, like I said, I was a Texas fan. So um, at the time, Bubba Thornton was the head coach of Texas. Mm-hmm. And um, I was the number three Drew Coast Spinner Nation. Alonzo Edwards was number one, Ryan Bell was number two. So if you know those two guys, they were both Olympians. So um, I was in a good class yeah. um, in junior college. Um, and so I, um, Bubba Thornton called me personally. He said, Philip, um, I would love to have you, but you have to walk on because I don't take Juco sprinters. And I was like, what? You oh, what? I didn't know that. Yeah, at the time, he didn't take Juco sprinters. So yeah, I was, I was, I was, at least he called me. That was the great thing. He called me. Um, and um, so I was, I was hurt, sad, but um, like I tell kids all the time, um, don't go in debt chasing your dream school. If they don't want you, don't go in debt chasing your dream school. And so I had a four-hour scholarship to the University of Washington. And so I signed with them in Seattle. It was a great, great experience. And then wow. I transferred to Texas Southern University. Okay. As I say, now, Seattle is a little far. I mean, yeah, I, from Chanute to Dallas is a decent little yeah. drive now. Mm-hmm. But now we're talking about you're way out west. How, how was that going so far away from home? And really anybody that you know and talks like you, you know, no accents up there yeah. and things like that. So I, I'm the person that likes to do just stuff different. And so if you haven't noticed, I do stuff different. I don't like going with the grain. I, I like do stuff different. And so I was like, Pac-12, um, Washington, why not? And the coach, I love Shane at the time. He was a coach, spring coach there, and I he connected with him. Um, and I liked the DMC, the um, indoor facility. And so I was like, I'm about to go up there and be different and start my own tradition. And so I went up there. How would you enjoy the time up there? Uh, it was it was good, but then again, um, something happened with my credits. Um, they have trimesters there, so I wouldn't have been eligible right away. So I transferred down to be eligible right away. Okay, a L- lot of rain up there, man. They need oh, that. A lot of rain. Yeah, they need that indoor rain. facility. <laughs> but it's beautiful. It's beautiful up there. It's, it's amazing. I-, I love where you know the outdoor track and the indoor track sits, and the the lake or whatever is right there yeah. as well. It is mm-hmm. pretty cool. Pretty cool area. Yeah. Being from Texas, you never see that before. So that's why it, it attracted me a lot because I'm from Texas. I was like, I've never seen this before in my life, and it's beautiful. Yeah, that's cool. So you know, transfer. Would you say Texas Southern? Texas Southern University, yes, sir. Yeah, another great school. Okay, so how'd that go? It was um, I get there first. Uh, first semester, I'm there. I'm like, man, I was just at Washington. This is a different kind of. Mm-hmm. I'm in a school with 55,000 kids. I'm in a school with about 11,000. It's an HBCU, Historical Black College. Mm-hmm. The first person in history ran nine seconds. Jimmy Hines was Prince TSU, so it's a lot of history there. Oh, wow. Um, and so I'm there on campus. I'm like, okay, it's cool, it's cool, but it's not where I wanted to be. Again, it's not where I wanted to be. It's like in JUCO. I was like, I didn't want to be here. And then again, the next two years, it was the great, best decision of my life. I fell in love with that school, and the rest is history. I was one of the top sprinters in the nation. I was a top six sprinter in the 200 meters, top 20 sprinter in the 100 meters. Before North Carolina a going to Nationals, I was doing that at TSU, going to Nationals. So 
I was one of the first HBCU guys to go to nationals. Um, more, so. more shots fired. <laughs> du- Dwayne, if you, I know you're listening, don't still recruit his kids. Okay. Don't, don't let this sour you on Philip Frederick. All right. We, we know. We know. Uh, and so you said you finished out your degree in broadcast journalism. Yes, sir. Broadcast that's, so, journalism. that's so funny. I'm in, from a journalism background as well. Mm-hmm. I was a print journalism major in college. Okay. So, so it was okay. the, the TV people and the newspaper people. So yeah. okay, that's so you. interesting. And, and so what were you thinking as you're finishing up your career at Texas Southern as a student athlete? What are you thinking mm-hmm. for career at this point? Um, I'm thinking um, I was top, like I said, I was top six in the nation, 20 meters. So I'm, I'm thinking about going pro. That was my main goal is going running professional. Okay. Um, but I also wanted to be on ESPN. I wanted to be, I wanted to be like Stephen A. Smith. That was my goal. He, he really motivated me, so I want to be like Stephen A. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a big ESPN guy, but, you know, Stephen A. Smith's clips like Stephen are a. everywhere. We don't need more Stephen A. Smith. We don't need more yelling at the camera. And he ain't yeah. the only one, by the way, but, oh, man, holy cow. But at the time, he was my – was him and Skip Bayless was really cool to me, oh, and I liked them two together. Yeah. So, so, so what did you end up doing? Did you, did you join a, a post-collegiate group? Yes, I joined um, – I turned pro. Um, I went to Vegas for about two or three years, mm-hmm. um, trained out there with Brent Davis. Um, my first meet was in Canada, Saskatchewan, indoor meet. So that's my first pro meet. It was pretty cool. Um, and then I came back to Texas and trained a couple more years down there. How was that first trip to Canada? I mean, cause what I love about track and, and kids that, you know, I'm gonna say try to go pro meeting, you don't, you know, you don't end up going to the, you know, the top three people that ever can make it to the top top. Yeah. Right. But mm-hmm. I love the ability to travel to new places. you know, track took yeah. you to places that you never, you I'm going exactly. I'm, I'm to big um, swath here and stay with me. Uh, you never would have went to Seattle. You, you probably would have, mm-hmm. you know, but you know what I'm saying? Like Seattle and Canada. That's so mm-hmm. cool. How was that experience going to a different country? Um, I loved it. For when I finally got a passport. So I mean, a kid from Dallas, Texas getting a passport. <laughs> I stuff that my family, nobody in my family ever did that before. So I'm doing right. stuff that my family never did. And it's, it's actually an amazing thing. I'm um, getting stamps in there, going to Canada, Ireland, stuff like that. Um, it's amazing in, in its own going through customs, just experiencing that, just the small things, experiencing customs and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, was really cool. Um, going then going there was is amazing. It was it was all frozen, but when we went there, but it was it was nice. Native twenty degrees, <laughs> but it was crazy. Um, indoor facilities, they love track there in Canada, so they show, they treat you right, like you like you're a superstar. So um, track overseas is really a big time thing. It, it, people don't understand that it's like it's like NFL here, mm-hmm. and so they treat you like royalty when you're over there running for the in, in their countries. Wow. That's awesome. So where is, let's start working towards coaching now. Where is, mm-hmm. excuse me, where is coaching in your mind? You know, you're, you're running, you can go to Canada, you mentioned Ireland, things like that. You've got this broadcast journalism. You have this dream of being on ESPN, being on TV and, uh, you know, being a pundit or whatever they call them. Yeah. Uh, wh- where is coaching in, in your life as far as a career? Um, it's not even there. It's not even nowhere near. I never thought about how I'd be coaching ever in my life. Never thought it in a million years. Not one iota. Not like, oh man, if no. I could be like Coach Murphy, uh, no. Coach Hart. You know, he coached my my idol MJ. Not at all. Never, never thought about being coached ever. Never so, thought about it. So how how do we get there? What what's the step so, or the mini so steps? Around my sixth or seventh year of running professional, um, I had a they said a career in injury. Um, I tore my PT talent and my ankle and my spring ligament. And so I had to have surgery. I couldn't walk for eight months, which is depressing because um, I'm, I'm a guy that, you know, I run for a living. Um, couldn't walk. So um, I had to spell out what I'm going to do with my life for those um, for the rest of my life, basically. Um, so uh, I started thinking about maybe I could do private coaching while I get back from from um, from this injury. Um, so I started doing like private sessions here and there. And I actually started getting a lot of clients. So for, I started off at maybe two or three clients. Then I started getting like 60, 70 clients. Then I was like, hmm, maybe I'm pretty good at this. So let me start doing a summer track team. So then I made a summer track team. It's is this in Texas? Yeah, it's in Texas. Okay. And it's called No Speed Limit. That was, that was our team name. Oh, and so my first year, we had a girl become an All-American. She ran like a 24, and she became All-American. And uh, my second year, I had a girl win a national championship. Madison Jeffrey, she's one of the fastest girls in Texas right now. She oh. won the 200 meters as an eighth grader, but 24, 11, 11, 88, and 56 as an eighth grader. So she was not too bad. <laughs> um, and I'm like, okay, I can do this. And um, as I'm building this program up from nothing again, um, the AD from Fort Scott actually called me the first time and he said, do you want to um, become head coach? And I said, no, <laughs> I turned it down the first year, turned it down. Really? Wh- why? Just didn't want to go back to Kansas? Um, no, it's because I, was, and I got back from my injury. I actually recovered from my injury. It's not never run again, but I actually ran uh, two more years after that. Mm-hmm. And um, the doctors were actually amazed that I, I ran. And then I also did a show called Next Olympic Hopeful, 
which is um, they pick 50 athletes in America and we compete in, um, for a sport like rugby, um, bobsled, um, skeleton, and all that. And actually we finished in the top two. And so I was on a TV show and finished top two for the best athletes in America. Well, I, I want to know, I, hold on. I want to know more about this. I've never heard this. Yeah. So, um, and so I, some kind of reality TV show thing. Yes, yeah, sir. So if you go to NBC sports, it's on my link in my, um, Instagram or Twitter. It's on my okay. link. Um, it's called next Olympic hopeful. And they picked 50 athletes to go against each other. We was in Colorado Springs, um, at Olympic training center. And, um, we 50 athletes, we did different kind of competitions. We did the 40, we did the sprint lift weights and all that. And they picked the best athlete at, at the end of the show. Um, I finished top two, Josh Williams and me finished top two for bobsled. So we actually got picked to go to the bobsled um, training camp, 2018. Who, who were the other, you mentioned Josh, who were the other 48? Were these like legit people? Like, were you like, oh yeah, I got to work to to win this thing. So, some, some, so they had competitions at Lifetime Fitness. I think it was Lifetime Fitness, I'm not sure. Um, but they picked a couple athletes that there and then they picked that people that actually did sports, other sports. So I was one of the guys they picked from other sports. I was a track guy, so they picked from other sports, track, football, um, the, the cash line, stuff like that. They picked people, different people from different sports. And um, they put us together. And you were one of the finals list for the bobsled? Yes, sir. So I started off with rugby. I was, I was supposed to be rugby. Then they moved me over to bobsled. Huh. And it's the craziest thing what, in the What is this little kid, fourth grade <laughs> uh, field day kid doing bobsledding and rugby you you grew up when you were tell me this is the truth maybe all the way through okay. high school you had no idea what rugby even was did you no i didn't I yeah, couldn't yeah, tell yeah. You what it is. i couldn't, I couldn't yeah be. yeah had no idea I, I grew up in alabama we ain't have rugby and we <laughs> certainly didn't have bobsled let me exactly. tell you I, I knew what bobsledding was from the winter olympics but i certainly did not know what rugby was yeah so what what happened with the uh, the uh, bobsledding thing so 2018 i believe 17 18 um we went up to um lake plastic um, New York, where they have the training center. Beautiful for, um, for bobsled. Um, we competed for the rookie championships. I took second in the rookie rookie championship. Again, Josh Williams is a he's a monster. He's on a he's on a USA team right now. He was like a six four, two thirty five, a linebacker basically, yeah. running four fours, and he's a he's a beast. He's amazing, amazing guy. Um, and I finished second to him, so I don't feel bad. He's a, he's a great guy. <laughs> Were you you know? Here's my dangerous bobsled knowledge, right? There's a driver and a pusher, and I know there's two man, mm -hmm. four man, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Were you a pusher or a driver? I was a pusher. I'm, I'm in the, I'm, I can't drive. No, 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 no. Okay. I, I <laughs> that, takes, that takes 20 years to do that. <laughs> is that right? To, to drive They're, the bobsled? It takes, it takes a long time to learn how to drive a bobsled. They're really good at that. See, I always thought like, cause you know, you see where they go and I know there's turns and stuff like that, but it uh -huh. feels like the bobsled just goes that way, you know, but, <laughs> but they're actually driving. It's a skill like that, huh? Yeah, it's a skill. It's, you have to learn that skill. You have to practice it. You have to be really good at it. Uh, I would have assumed you'd have been the pusher, but I didn't want to assume because of, you know, the acceler <laughs> but because of the acceleration pattern of sprinting, yeah. you know, things like mm -hmm. that. How, how much, since you've done both, you know, sprinted mm -hmm. at a high level and bobsledded at a fairly high level too, mm -hmm. are, are there a lot of similarities or are there some pretty individualized differences? It's really similar. It's no difference, actually. It actually made me faster, to be honest with you. And it helped me in track um, to learn to push and keep my, keep my hips up front, you know, keep me everything in front, push, push, pushing. Um, so it actually helped me in track as well. Um, it's basically pushing out. It's like a drive phase, basically. Staying low, pushing out. And when you get in top speed, make sure you get tall and then jump into the sled. So it's all the really thing. And then once you jump in, you're you're done, right? The drive, it's, I'm done. You're just, just staying down. Break. I just pulled the brakes at the very end. <laughs> oh, wow. That's cool. So you start it and stop it. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. so, um, it, it's, it's, it's a crazy thing. So Josh went down first, right? And I'm, he, I asked him, I said, Josh, how was it? He was like, Philip, I can't explain it. I was like, what do you mean you can't explain? How does it feel? He said, you just have to do it to feel it. I was like, all right, whatever. So Lake Plastic is one of the hardest tracks in the world, by the way. And we pray at that track. So my first time going down, we're going maybe 50 to 60 miles per hour. Hard, hardest in regards to like navigating it or hard like like if you if you both. crash? Both. Uh, oh, both, okay. <laughs> Everything, all the above. <laughs> yeah. All the above. It's, you don't want to even try it. It's not <laughs> and so I'm going down. I'm not even fully pushing the sled. I'm going down maybe 50 miles per hour. I'm going down. I'm like, oh my God. It's like rallying back and forth. Your head's going back and forth. You're swaying back and forth. And I got out. I was like, what did I just do? <laughs> and the coach is like, yeah, most people we, um, quit after the first time. I was like, I'm not quitting. So let's go up again and do it again. <laughs> wow, I love that attitude. It's like, yeah, yeah, I ain't quit. That, that's not in the definition at yeah. all here. Let's get back up. So the next time, did you go fat, like actually push and go yeah, fast? Yeah, pushing it. Yeah, and it gets, it doesn't get any easier. <laughs> like how, how, how fast did you get that thing going? Because they, they can go we like go, we go to 70, 80 miles per hour. And it, it goes, it goes. And I and um they say you're not a real bobsled until you crash. 
So we went to Salt Lake and um, I finally crashed in Salt Lake. And so. How, so first of all, how do you crash? Like, I mean, I've, again, I've seen them crash, but I don't really understand how you crash. And then how, um, how, did, how did that feel? It just depends on the weight might be shifted wrong. The driver may make the wrong angles. And then you, you tip over and you slide on your head for about 50, 50 yards, 50 meters. <laughs> Because you can't get out, you're just stuck. You can't get out, you're just stuck. And then, um, if you don't have your burn suit on, you'll you'll tear your skin off. By the way, so yeah. Oh wow, Do, it's you, amazing. I imagine that's got to be like, um, like being in a car crash. Like you, yeah. you have to you have to be sore. Like the next yeah, day, yeah, you're sore. Yeah, you're yeah. sore. It's, it's nothing like it. Um, I tell people all the time, if you want, well, watch watch the Olympics this year, you'll be actually shocked at what these these athletes can do. It's these are really big athletes in a little big tub. If you think about it, these are like six four, six three athletes. They're two twenty five, two thirty. And they're really good athletes. They're not just regular people that sit on the couch. They're actually amazing athletes. They didn't give love to those Winter Olympics guys because they're amazing. I like how you put that. Good athletes in a little tub. <laughs> That's what they are. They're, they're, they're NFL linebackers basically in a tub. And it's wow. amazing. And they That's, all fit in. They're all fit in. <laughs> That's so interesting. You know, this is what I love. I mean, I'm just so humbled to be the host of the Guild Connections podcast because I get to learn things that I never would have thought I'd have learned. You know, I, 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 you know here I am talking to a JUCO coach. I knew we were going to talk. We're, we're going to talk JUCO. And we have talked JUCO coach uh, track and field. Did not see bobsled coming into the conversation today, man. I yeah. love that. That's so awesome. Yeah. So how did you, what, what happened to bobsledding that you uh, eventually left and got into coaching? Um, it's just, um, um, it, it got too, too hectic bobsled and then college coaching. Yeah. Um, so at the time, and like I said, I was doing a summer track, and then um, Tom Haveron called me. He said, "You want to be my coach?" The first year, bring the program back from it's been a hiatus for maybe ten to fifteen years, mm -hmm. and they brought the program back to us in nineteen, I believe. Nineteen was the first year the program came back, and um, he told me he said, that "I'm gonna hire a new coach. Are you gonna, are you interested?" This is the second time he asked me now, for the second time, and I said, "Uh, I don't know yet, Tom." <laughs> and I still didn't accept it because I still was running track, I still wanted to run professional, I still had dreams I can go fast um and i said i've got another guy for you um carl goodman he's one of my good friends from coastal carolina i said hey man he, he'll take the job if if i don't take it and so i'm trying to plug him in at the same time while i'm trying to make my decision up and um he's like well you got until may blah 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 to make your decision up and i'm still sitting there like i don't know if i want to go to kansas and try this thing but meantime i still was filling applications like maybe 100 applications i got no calls back at the time so i got not one single call back from other schools yes there are other schools so this is interesting we just had um Dilji taylor on the podcast mm -hmm. and she she was talking about something very similar she had applied to other schools and mm -hmm. uh didn't get the job or you know so-and-so didn't call them etc and we talked about the attitude that you have with that because some people have the attitude of like uh well i'm gonna pin every one of those applications oh, yeah. on my wall yeah, you seem like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm that it's right there. My, yeah, Neil Show County actually didn't even hire me when I put the application in. And so, I, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> it's hard to follow this legacy, sir. So I get it. I get it. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, but but you know I and I challenged Diljeet on this one too now because she was that kind of attitude as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other attitude is, and this is the one I would challenge you to accept and become, mm -hmm. is thank goodness Neosho didn't hire you mm -hmm. and those ninety nine other schools didn't mm -hmm. call you because you are where you are in a good place today yeah, yeah. because mm -hmm. they didn't hire you and call you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. it, it's always it's funny when we look back at, you know, decisions and things that we decided to do and didn't do and people who hired mm -hmm. us and didn't hire us. And we, we always think about, you know, maybe how good it could have been. It's like, Oh man, if, um, you know, if so-and-so would have hired me, I'd probably be yeah. in the power five or whatever you think is mm -hmm. maybe I'd be the coach of Texas. That'd be a, you, you'd probably like that job, right? You'd be, That'd be the greatest exactly. job of all time. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> he, he's, he's coming for you. Flo, be careful. No, Flo has, he has no problem. He's good. <laughs> But we, we, we often forget that sometimes those decisions that didn't happen could have been negative as well. It's like, oh, my mm -hmm. goodness, so-and-so hired me. That could have been the end of my career because of blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so I get the, like, you know, I need, I want that external motivation. I want to show those other hundred schools how they missed out. But there's also, yeah. like, you, you don't need that motivation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you have your own internal yeah, exactly. motivation. I'm happy to be here, yeah. Exactly. So what, what made you, so did, did Carl take the job, first of all? No, he didn't take the job. <laughs> and so I say, I, well, Carl's like, I smell a setup here. Hold on. <laughs> he didn't take the job. I say, Carl, you ain't gonna take the job? He said, no. And then I say, Tom called me back again. He was like, are you gonna take the job? And I was like, ah, okay. 
what, <laughs> what is Tom's, like, why is he calling you? What I mean by that is, how do you know him? How does he know you? Just from the Allen County so, and Yosho days? So, no, um, Tom Halbron, okay, this, wait, you want, be wine. He's actually the, he was the sprint coach in the Yosho when I transferred over. So, yes, and He sir. became the AD at Fort Scott? At Fort Scott, yes, sir. Wow. Small world, right? <laughs> well, I love a track coach going into administration. Yeah, he was one of the first ones that actually do is, does, is a AD in the track coach, so. I love that because, you know, we, we need people who understand our sport mm -hmm. in positions that are making decisions that affect our sport. Exactly. And it's not an automatic. I mean, there's been some ADs who were track people who have cut tracks. So mm -hmm. I just can't believe you yeah. do that to your own sport, but, <laughs> uh, but I love that, you know, a track guy goes into administration. Very cool. Okay. So that's how he knew I was wondering where that came from. I mean, it just seemed like kind of out of the blue, but now it, that makes sense. And he, he was following me. He's, he's following me for my summer track teams. The three years I was doing sermon track, he's followed me for those three years. He's like, I saw you build that team up from nothing, mm -hmm. from four athletes to being a, a national power with your sermon track team. So can you do that for Fort Scott? And the, I finally said yes in May. And I said, yes, I'll um, I'll take the job. And then I asked Carl. I said, Carl, you want to be my assistant coach? <laughs> and Carl turned me down again, by the way. That's one of my good friends. He turned me down again. But he's, a, he's a, one of the best young coaches in Coastal Carolina and D1 right now. Oh, he's amazing. Hey, first of all, I, I, I very much dislike that he's such a good coach. <laughs> he's uh, so good because I'm a Troy University grad oh, okay. and they're in the same conference. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm tired of Coastal Carolina kids coming in and uh, beating my Trojans in all yeah. these events, specifically the hurdles and the sprints, man. Get out of here. Carl Goodman, yeah. you are terrible. You need to go to a different – actually, maybe I should sell it up a different way. You are awesome. Get You're out awesome. of the Sun Belt. How about that? Get away from my teams. And we, uh, you know, we hired a recent um, – grad from coastal carolina uh river okay. morrow he's our pole vault okay. specialist and okay. uh so he talks highly of, of coach goodman as well mm -hmm. so yeah so, yeah, so you finally take the job so so mm -hmm. what what turn what was the decision point turning because you still really weren't into you're doing the summer thing at summer club coaching yeah. but you weren't like yeah i'm a coach yet. you're still a professional athlete trying to yeah. find his way and where i'm going to be professional bobsledding sprinting etc mm -hmm. but something tom finally wore you down and something finally flipped for you and you said yep okay i'm, I'm gonna go to this profession yeah I, I mean i knew my time on track was coming down so i was like okay i gotta find something else to do now I, it, you know my career might be over now i just you know i wasn't running fast like i should have been running so i was like it's time for me to go do something else and coach i, I started liking coaching a lot i was like okay that's why i started filling out those applications and i was trying to get something mm -hmm. you know down the line and i was like well it's already here I keep getting asked this coach this team so i'm gonna do it now i'm finally gonna give in and go try this this coaching thing and so you joined Fort Scott, you said May, was this May of 20, not 21, 20? No, 20, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, okay, I was gonna say, I don't think you were, just, that's basically just getting to Fort Scott. You've had yeah. a season. So what, what, 19, I'm, no, 19, 19, sorry. Was that COVID year? I mean, everything I canceled? March 20 was COVID. Okay, so 19, May 19. Okay, so you got, got there and got your season canceled. Yes, yes. Okay. So my and first year was from canceled, yes, sir. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to count that, right? So I don't either. So have you been at Fort <laughs> Scott? Have you coached at Fort count. Scott for two years? One year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't count the first year. It didn't count. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to me about you get the job. Excuse me. You show up in May. Is there did you say there is no program at the time? So there's no kids? It, it was a program. It was it was basically distant for kids here when I got here. It was maybe four athletes on the roster when I got here when I told you about all the time is four people on the roster. Now this um, is interesting. You started in May. Yeah. So that's interesting because I started in Yosho, very similar. I had three or four kids mm -hmm. from the former coaches uh, program coming back. So I had four, if I did nothing when I got there in May, June, I'd have four kids starting September or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, but that, uh, that wasn't gonna fly for me. So what did you do in May? Did you just like, okay, get my feet wet, find out where, where's the, buildings, the cafeteria, where am I going to live? And we'll figure it out once September comes and we'll start really building for 21. Or did you hit the feet, hit the ground running, get your feet going and start recruiting immediately? I started recruiting immediately. For me, I had, I had no mentors at the time. I had nobody telling me what to do. Even Tom didn't, Coach Havron didn't help me at all. He was like, um, just, you're here, just figure it out. And so basically that's what I did. I figured it out on the run. I didn't, know, I didn't know how to recruit. I didn't know how to call um, athletes. I didn't know how to look anything up. I did everything on my own and I just figured it out as I went. So it was like trial and error basically. And um, so what I did was start looking for kids on athlete.net and I went basically looking for kids that times are not great, but they're okay. And so I can get some kids signed. And, and you know, it's May. So everybody basically already signed already. Basically. Exactly, right. Mm -hmm. And so um, somehow I had signed 40 kids. 
to come to Fort Scott. And, er and everybody in the nation was like, everybody in Dream Code Nation was like, who is this kid, guy at Fort Scott getting mm -hmm. kids to come to Fort Scott, Kansas? Right. They're all from Texas, by the way. I'm from Texas. They're all from Texas. And nobody could believe they were signing some, actually some decent kids, some pretty good kids, actually about three D1 kids that didn't have big offers from D1 mm -hmm. schools mm -hmm. coming down to Fort Scott. And um, nobody could believe it. And so um, it was pretty cool to have about 45 kids our first year. My women's team was about maybe eight athletes deep mm -hmm. women's side, but guys were more deeper because, you know, you always can find a guy somewhere. <laughs> yeah, th this is so similar. Th same. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had both had a roughly, you know, four handful of kids coming back, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Hit the ground running. And you, you, of course, you're better than me. So you beat me. I didn't have 40. I had about 30 to 35, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but same, but in mostly from Kansas, to be honest with you. But, yeah. uh, but a few Louisiana, Texas, et cetera. A couple of real good kids had a, you know, and he didn't jump 50, but he was like 48, 49 foot in the triple, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but so that's so interesting, the, the similarities there, though. Yeah. But, but you went, you had a pretty good quality kids coming in. Yeah, they were all right. They're pretty good quality. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, and nobody could believe how I can get some kids so fast. And I had to be doing something wrong. I had to be cheating or something to get them to come to Fort Scott, Kansas. And to be honest with you, my recruiting motto is just being 100% honest with everybody. Um, I had my, some college coaches lied to me when I came in. And so that's what it rubbed me the wrong way. Like you lied to me about my career. You try to basically end my career before I started. And so I would never do it to an athlete, certain athlete. I would tell them 100% truth about grades, about classes, about Fort Scott, about the food, dorms, everything. I'll 100% with everybody. And so that's why I get 100%. Most of my kids I recruit because I'm 100% real with them at all times. Now, now what's that mean? 100% real. I know you just said, you know, the food and the town and yeah. uh, all that kind of yeah, the grades that you're going to need, all that kind of stuff. You maybe you as a coach, like, hey, here's my style. Like, don't come here if you don't like yeah, this. My, yeah. So, my, the, it's a, it's an energy, a vibe. I like, I, I like to be in home with the athletes. Actually, I don't like talking on the phone with them at all because you can't get a good feel for the person. They can get a feel of me or I can't get a feel of them at all. So, I, they come for visits or I go see them at their house and um, try to get a vibe for them. Um, and I tell them exactly 100%, like, this is the money I'm offering you. There's no student loans in there. There's no hidden fees in there. There's nothing in there. This is what I'm offering you. And so they actually trust me more because I'm giving them 100% transparent with them at all times. But, but they don't know that you're being 100% transparent. You, you know what I'm saying? Like you can tell them all this, but until they yeah. experience it, exactly. that's when they go, oh, this dude was actually legit with me, right? Yeah, legit. But having that attitude, and I love that attitude, by the way, mm -hmm. don't, this isn't me questioning, like you're doing it wrong. I, I think that's mm -hmm. the exact way. In fact, I, I love that attitude when we talk about on the NCAA level with the transfer portal, mm -hmm. like to me, it's like, if you're more transparent about your, you and the school and your style, et cetera, you'll hear no more. Like kids will say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to run for you. That's a good thing because that means yeah. they're not coming to your school in a year or a semester or two years transferring. So I, I love that attitude. But with that, has that ever bitten you in the butt whether it's you lost a kid or you got a kid that you, he he or she was telling you, yeah, 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 that sounds awesome. And it gets there and he's like, no, this sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any like horror stories there? Uh, to be honest with you, since I've been here for two years, two and a half years, I only had one kid transfer out to a different junior college. And that's just, you know, it might be because of me, but I think it's because of people that was around her. And, and so it just happened that way. Um, I actually, if you look at my emails, I have about a hundred kids that want to transfer into support Scott. And so it's, it's the opposite. Um, I really, nobody really here actually says they don't like it here. It's, maybe they don't like the town because it's small, but it's really, nobody really said that yet. So I'm really lucky. I'm really lucky. <laughs> and, and so what have you been doing? What, you know, you mentioned 40 kids right off the bat. That's no, mm -hmm. that's no easy feat in a normal year, a, a full mm -hmm. year, but mm -hmm. you did it in May when, boy, exactly. Doesn't 90% of the kids and maybe 99% of the kids know where they're going or at least have it narrowed down to one or two or three. And then here comes this yeah. stranger from this strange school, right? We're not talking about, yeah. you know, coming into University of Texas in May and you call and it's like, yeah. oh, okay, well, everybody knows who and where yeah. and what that yeah. is, right? You're calling from Fort Scott Community. What, coach? I, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're at. It's May. Uh, I'm, I'm about to walk the, uh, the stage for my diploma. I already know where mm -hmm. I'm going but you were able to either find 40 kids that didn't know where they were going. And that says a lot yeah. about the junior college system that, that I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's uh, possible or, and, or 40 kids that you were able to convince, Hey, maybe just give me a shot. Like this might be the yeah. right school for you. How, how, did, how did you do that? I tell them on. Um, so again, it's, it's no tradition here at this school. There's nothing that you can sell them on. They can't sell them on championships like Barton can. Mm -hmm. You can't sell them on pros like South Plains can. You can't do that. So here I sell them on me, basically, to be honest with you. Sell them, sell them me. I sell them, I ran professional track. I've been in junior college. I've been to Olympic trials. I've been top ranked in the nation. I sell them on me first. Then I sell them on 
what they can do and what they can build. And, um, the future, uh, I sell them on that and then they they buy into it. And they're like, I wanna be something different. I don't, I don't wanna go to the powerhouse. I wanna beat the powerhouses. And that's why I sell them on. Um, be, be original, be you, be different. Don't chase the name. You can make the name wherever you go. Um, everybody knows Barton County is, is Barton County. It's a D1 school. Everybody knows South Plains is a D1 school. Everybody knows Butler, B Coffeeville, Iowa Central. Those are D1 schools. And so I'll try to make Fort Scott a D1 school as well. And um, and we try to make that name and he's doing this pretty good right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good selling point. And it's going pretty good right now. So <laughs> what I love about, you know, again, I talked about, you know, I live on Twitter and if you're on Twitter and we're not connected, what in the world are we doing here? Yeah, what are they doing? Uh, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Listen to him. Exactly. Right. Uh, but hit me up on Twitter at Mike Cunningham. It's easy to remember. It's my name, all one word. Uh, I was very blessed to get that name. Twitter actually, so I actually, uh, because I had a relationship with Twitter, uh, there was somebody who had at Mike Cunningham, mm -hmm. but, he, but he wasn't using it. And so I was like, oh, right. hey, I was like, if they, he's not using it. Like he, he hadn't posted in like three years or something like that. Yeah. I was like, can I get it? He's obviously inactive. And they, they kicked him off and gave it to me. <laughs> That's big time, man. That's big somebody, time. Somebody out there right now is like, mother effort. That was my <laughs> name. So some guy named Mike Cunningham is really ticked off right now. Yes, he is. So um, w w on Twitter, you, and that's where I see you, uh, actually, it's all of where I see you. I mean, I don't, I don't think we're connected yeah. on Facebook. I don't do a lot on Instagram. I'm doing more lately, but I don't do a lot there. Yeah, I followed but, you, but you didn't follow me back, so I unfollowed you, by the way. Hey, um, I have a, <laughs> hold on now. So that's the second person. So I got to give my philosophy, and it's the dumbest philosophy in the world, but it's my philosophy. So mm -hmm. on Twitter, I don't follow any non-people. So mm -hmm. if Fort Scott Community College Track and Field has an account, I won't follow him on Twitter, mm -hmm. but I'll follow Philip Redrick yeah. on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Like to me, Twitter is so big on communication. So I want to mm -hmm. talk to Philip, not yeah. this non-person. I don't know who's behind that. I don't know if it's an SID. Exactly. It's probably you, but you know what I'm saying? I, I, I won't do it. There's very few accounts that I'll follow on Twitter. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, usually it's all of our facilities, like Gately and Louisville and Spokane mm -hmm. and Crossplay. That's about the only thing I'll follow on there. On Instagram... I decided to do something different over there and I didn't follow anybody uh, mm -hmm. and posted. And so I had something like, I had something like three or four or five, something right there, hundred followers. So nothing big, uh, but only followed 13 people. <laughs> and it was people that I knew like, yeah, like, and not even track people. Like it was my, exactly. this is going to sound so funny. It was my tattoo artist up in Chicago. Uh, <laughs> it was vanilla ice who I'm friends with. Don't laugh. Uh, you know, those kind of people. Right. But yeah. then, but then recently I changed on Instagram. So now I follow like a thousand and it's mostly accounts. So there I'll follow yeah. Fort Scott community college, okay, Kansas track exactly. and field, et cetera. But through that time, people like you and other people have followed me. And so now I'm starting to catch up and, and follow you. And, and I've had so many people like, Oh, I think it was Eric Woodset at Oregon, the throws coach there. No. I think he was like, Oh, so now, you know, I followed you two years ago and now you're finally following me. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. <laughs> here's my dumb yeah. philosophy. And I had explained it to him and he's like, All right. he, go, he goes, it's dumb. I was like, I know Eric. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. The bad aside, let's get back over here. Yeah. But on Twitter, you have created this uh, this brand. It's it's called building the brand, basically. Yeah. Build the fort. Mm -hmm. When did that start, and how did you come up with that? To be honest with you, I was just thinking I need something different. Like most junior colleges don't do stuff like I've started doing graphics. I started doing everything that D ones do. Start doing visits. Most JUCOs don't do visits. We do. Mm -hmm. um, I do. You you come my uniform. You try it on. I said I like to be different. Like I told you at the beginning of the show. And to be different, it, it, people don't like it. And so I got to Twitter and I was like, I do something different. What, what's different? And built the fort. This happened because it's Fort Sky. It's a fort. And I'm like, we're building a program here. And it's it's a good hashtag. And I started posting and built the fort, built the fort. And it kept caught on big time. Mm -hmm. At the convention, this past um, couple of weeks ago at the convention, everybody's like, build the fort guy, build the fort guy. And that was actually kind of refreshing. They actually realized, hey, people are actually noticing it. And um, I go to high schools all the time, build the fort. And it's, 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 it's pretty, pretty amazing to see people actually loving it and actually running along with it. That's super interesting, right? I mean, I like, copyright that actually. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, don't go too far. <laughs> <laughs> I have people at times like, "Hey, uh, I got this new product idea. I want to um, uh, patent it." And I'm like, "Yeah, okay. Do you know how much You're that right. costs? First of all, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, more power to you. So go ahead, copyright that. See what. <laughs> uh, more power to you. More power to you. Um, how many followers do you have on Twitter? Uh, about what five thousand. Yeah, that's interesting. So, and not that follower count. Yeah. is the be all end all by any imagination. Mm -hmm. And in the scheme of things, 5,000, I'm about to say this, and I have half of what you have, but mm -hmm. 5,000 in this world is not that many, right? Yeah, no, it's no, not no, like, no, no. you know, there, we, we've got people, you have 
ten thousand and a hundred thousand yeah. and you know exactly uh thirty forty fifty thousand there's so many i'm always amazed that the coaches have thirty forty fifty thousand because i'm like wow there's mm-hmm. there's fifty thousand people that care about you coach that's awesome i love that that's so cool that's great yeah. but with a relatively small amount of followers uh five thousand in the grand scheme of things that had to feel pretty good though that people like it's catching yeah. on like the fire is yeah. is going it's going and um, people say it all the time to me and I, I'm, I just, I'm shocked. Even the t- big time coaches come to me, power fives, built the fort, man, I'm loving that. But I look what you're doing, like you're doing, it's, it's, it's great to see that. Actually, it's, it's, my whole work's paying off sometimes. You know, it actually if, feels good. If you ever want to be the head coach University of Texas, you got to make sure people are putting build the fort with Philip Redrick. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. Like build the fort <laughs> guy, that's right. Philip Redrick, the build the fort guy. That's right. You got to copyright <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's- so it's been, and then the brick, brick by brick is another motto. Mm. Like brick, you got to build the fort, build it by bricks. Mm. And so that's another one we're doing brick by brick. Um, and so we, we just try to do, be different and be fresh, be original um, for the future. Kids love that stuff. Like mm. if you see us, we, we, I buy sleeves from athletes. I buy, I believe you, if you look good, you feel good, you run good. I'm a big believer in that. If you look at my pictures from college, I have my glasses on, I have my sleeves. I was swagged out. So that's what I, I'm, I'm a big believer in that. And so I believe the kids love that. And so that's what I use for social media and recruiting tools. So we're, we're going to get to that because I, I want to talk about all of what you just said there, the sleeves and the whole, mm-hmm. the whole night. So we'll get there in a second. But but I'm going to give you a free one to copyright. So you said brick by brick. You got to change that somehow to Redrick by Redrick or brick by <laughs> brick by Redrick or something. You got to get this name. I, I get the name in there, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna try that next time. Next tweet. Yeah, we, somehow you got to start forming it together, man. Yeah, uh-huh. or have a, like a, a brick by brick like gif or something like that. But it's like mm-hmm. your, your head, or like you know your your oh, eyes. Wow. Right yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is all I do, I man. Yeah, it's all I do. Yeah. So I do sit around thinking things like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your invoice. You send me invoice later. <laughs> you can't afford me. Trust me. <laughs> I can't afford me. All right. Okay. You talked about the sleeves and recruits uh, with the uniforms and things like that. I love this topic, right? You know, you're on Twitter. You're you're active on Twitter a lot too. I, I'm, a, yeah. I'm very impressed. And so you've seen these discussions. Uh, we recently yeah. had Brian Kula from uh, Kula Sports Performance, I think is the name of it, um, out in Colorado. He's a big time high school coach out there. And we mm-hmm. talked about recruiting out from the high school coaching perspective, yeah. right? And I brought up this topic. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on it too. So there's there's kind of two camps to this trying on the uniform for Mm -hmm. recruits, right? There's the, um, here's your side of it. You're like, Hey, I want you, I won't put words in your mouth. Here's your side of it who allows it. And let's find Mm -hmm. out why here in a second. Then there's the other side who says it's a privilege to, you know, wear my Jersey. So you don't get it unless you're on the team, that, that kind of side. Right. So why, why do you go to your side of like, yeah, when recruits come in, we let them try on the uniform, take the pictures, those kind of things. What's your reasoning? It, it makes them feel like they're part of part of a program. It makes them feel like they're part of the team for just a couple seconds. Even if they don't sign with you, they feel a part of Fort Scott just for a little bit. And it's for it's for them. It's not for me. It's for them to feel special. It's their moment. They're recruiting. It's their moment. Their time in history. Um, they deserved it because they, they earned their way to get to on a visit. They earned their way for a scholarship offer. They should deserve. They deserve to have that intention for them for just a little bit. And um, I'm big on the athlete. I'm not big on my, me. It's not about me. It's about them at the end of the day. It might seem cliche, but I'm really about my athletes. That's why they love it here. That's why they come back every year. They keep coming here every year because I'm about about them. Um, and so when they put the sleeves on, they put this jersey on, uniform on, they feel good about their steps. And so that's what I'm big on. Has it ever bit a kid in the butt? So on social media, they post their Fort Scott jersey, and then they sign with Barton. And, oh, it, it happened. And all the Barton people are like, well, hey, look at here, man. Did you ever hear about uh, the the kid? This is a while ago now in Alabama. So Alabama, right? Alabama, Auburn. Uh, yeah. for, actually, it's Troy University and then Alabama, uh-huh. Auburn. Uh, like but the kid, I think he grew up an Auburn fan. I could be getting this backwards. So mm-hmm. he got a tattoo of the Auburn Tiger. Then he oh, wow. saw, but then he signed with Alabama. That's crazy. I mean, it, that's like, it's one yeah. thing for the picture. I mean, those last that's forever too, but the tat, like, Dude, you got to be a practice yeah. every day with an Auburn Tiger yeah, tattoo. That's, 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 that's a little extreme. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say he got hazed a little bit more than he should have. Every day. <laughs> with, with the kids trying out the uniform, not necessarily the, the kids you have there, but just in a broad sense, have you ever heard of a kid who, like, a, a, has a coach ever revoked an offer because they saw their recruit wearing somebody else's uniform? 
a coach took another time once they see them in a four sky uniform, they don't even recruit them no more. They, they make jokes like that. But uh, I, I laugh yeah. at them, but I don't know if they're serious or not. But they, no, they, no, they're, they're lying. Come on, Philip Redrick. <laughs> I know you're still young and rookie coach here who's got a lot of experience. Let me give you my experience uh, co- coaching and recruiting in the SEC. So I, I've done the blood battle. They are one hundred percent lying to you, my friend. Come on, yeah. Makes you feel good. That makes you feel good. Yeah, you know they're lying guy, too. Like fourth guy was there, we're not coming. So it makes you feel good. I know, but um, no, no, no coaches ever worked it. I don't think so. Um, I know one kid was a big time recruit. He had my uniform on his Instagram and didn't sign with Barton. So it, it was kind of funny. I was like, man, I'm gonna sign with us, but it, it's okay. <laughs> Tell them make sure they they uh when they post that you sign with Barton, they use this picture right here and put the fourth exactly. guy. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, but it's, it's fine. Though. It's part of recruiting. Um, it's no hard feeling either way it goes. That's good. That's good. What, what's the, I, I, this was not in my era of coaching. And so I don't know it or get it, I guess. Um, this is my old man speech uh-huh. here. What, what What's up with the sleeves? I know you do the sleeves and they're, they're wildly popular. A lot of other, uh, actually, I should say a lot. I, I still think this is in the yeah. minority. I think maybe less than 10, 15% of programs actually still, uh, still actually use them today. But what's mm-hmm. up with the sleeves? Is it just a fashion thing or is there something to it? So when I did it in college, I think I started, I like to think I started that, that, tr- that trend, by the way. Um, when I did it in college. Um, I did it because I had calf cramps a lot. So my body fat was too low and I always caught cramps, even if I was hydrated or not. So I, I wear mine for style and for my cramps on my calf. Um, but um, I love the way they look. And I believe that, like I said, if you look good, you feel good, you run good. And I needed my sleeves. And I need my glasses on as well. And so um, whatever my athletes want, they, they'll probably get if, if they earn it. So I order the sleeves, but you don't get them unless you qualify for nationals. Oh, is and that so, right? So it's not just given to everybody. We still have to work for stuff. We have a standard here. You have to qualify for nationals to actually get a sleeve. Oh, that's cool. Now, I, I like that. A little bit of a distinction, a little bit, uh, you know, of a goal setting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody doesn't get a sleeve. No, sir. You have to actually work for it, earn it. Where where did that come from? And what I mean by that is that's not necessarily a natural thing to think about because we're talking about a fashion piece. We're not talking about a, a piece that makes you run faster. Yeah. Beyond the sense of look good, feel good. So maybe you run mm-hmm. gooder. I went to Troy, so I say gooder. Um, <laughs> but but you you had th- that mentality of giving kids a goal and you know a stretch uh-huh. goal and and a reward for that goal. Where did that because that is that from a, a coach you had, or where, where did that it, come from? It just came out of the blue, to be honest with you. Um, most of my coaches had goals that we had to get, um, but I like to have something incentive, like have them get something, earn something. Um, just like, uh, and we have practice here. Like, if they have a good practice, I, I'll tell them you had a good practice. I may even give them ice cream one day for practice because they had a great practice, pra- great week of practice. So sometimes you have to get athletes something because it, it gets boring. I mean, you get wearing in circles every day, dying every single day. You got to mix it up a little bit, have them excited. And so that's what I do. I'm a little different. I'm a side of the box guy. And, and so I do stuff a little different. And you're in Fort Scott, Kansas. So sometimes it's ice cream. Exactly. Sometimes, sometimes it's hot chocolate because it's freezing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. How far is Fort Scott from Chanute? I can't remember. Uh, it's about 45 minutes. I, yeah. that far. I thought it was Allen County, Coffeeville. Yeah. Coffeeville yeah, was all farther, part. but it was all yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we did. I don't think Fort Scott. I don't think Fort Scott had a program when I was there. Probably didn't. So I don't. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they had the distance program and I didn't pay attention to that so exactly. huh, um <laughs> well, uh, where was i gonna go i had a really good follow-up question there and i, I you, you mentioned ice cream and hot chocolate and i <laughs> completely got off track there Make sense. Make sense. uh so talk to me about what are you coaching you know you were a two four kind of background um mm-hmm. kind of sounded like you didn't say this but kind of sounded like you wanted to run the hundred because you're like coach didn't let me run the hundred so you kind of wanted to run that because you were too tall i love that hope coach has changed his philosophy here in 2022 um, so, but what, so what are you got, what are you focusing on coaching so i actually ran 100 in college so when i got to college i actually ran the 100 okay. so my first time ever run the 100 guess what i ran uh, 1032 well, I was going to say, you ran 717. I was going to say 1132. You ran 10-3, huh? 1032, everyone in the 100. First time what, I ran the 100. Where, in did, where did you run? Did you run that at TCU? Because um, I'm very familiar with the five and six meter when that's where, when I was at Mississippi State, we, that was our first meet. We always go to TCU and run really uh-huh. fast, but never win legal. No, it was actually at Southwestern in um, Kansas. So we ran that. And it was, was actually like 40 degree weather. So you were more like 10 mile per hour wins. I get no, it. it. Was- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know it what was, that is. One point eight, one point eight that day. <laughs> but no, it was, and I ran the hundred my whole career after that, so it was okay. pretty decent. What, what did you end up getting your PR down to in the hundred? Ten eighteen, dude. So, 
wasn't that bad. <laughs> not that bad. Come on, man. There ain't many people that run sub. Ain't many people that run sub ten thirty. So to be in the ten yeah. teens, that's legit, man. That's awesome. It's not too bad at all. You, you stop. Um, you stop running that quarter. Never. You're done with I'm not that. I never ran it. I never ran it. I just never. Right. Ran it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a man's race. I'm not. I'm not there yet. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not like that. I'm, I'm <laughs> Every quarter mile right now is like, that's right. That's the smartest that's right. thing he's ever said. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them they're the best athletes on the track. They're the best athletes on the track. Every, every, every time you step on them, they're, they're great. Yeah, they're tough, man. So what, what are you focusing on coaching yourself here at Fort Scott? Are you staying on the sprints or you have to maybe uh, widen coach, out a little bit? When I first got here, I coached everything except 5K, 10K <laughs> when I first got here. Um, I did eight to all the sprints and throws and long jump. Now I have a throws coach and I have a long jumps coach. And so I, now I just focus on hurdles and sprints and um, little multis every now and then. What's uh, what's Jafet doing for you? Is he... Uh, he just drives the bus all the time. That's what he does. That's what I pay him for. <laughs> no, he does uh, mid-distance, distance, cross-country. Okay. So he does 800 on up. Nice. I do 600 on down. Nice. And so. Cool. So, and was, yeah. so what are you, you know, you, you were a sprinter, a, a straight sprinter, you know, a straight mm -hmm. sprinter, meaning you're hundred and, you know, you didn't dabble out into the eight or anything. You didn't really do the quarter, but you're a, a sprinter by trade, uh, mm -hmm. getting coached by, you know, several different people, right? Sheen, who I love, he's great. Right? Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Uh, you know, go to Texas Southern, all of these guys and gals that coached you had different, you know, even to the post-collegiate side have mm -hmm. different philosophies. Uh, you do some bobsledding, which I assume there's some different Strength, yeah. strength and conditioning thought processes there mm -hmm. uh what are you doing so you, you you take all that that's you know we we, we originally coached like we were coached so you, you're kind of taking mm -hmm. that all those information pieces and you're coaching that but what are you doing for coaching for your professional development in regards mm -hmm. to the hurdle something you've never done the long jump and triple jump things you've never done how are you how are you getting yourself better in a professional development side um i, I do a lot of calling other coaches that have been had done it before um, I call Coach Dab sometimes. I talk to him about hurdles. Um, I talk to a lot of people about it. Um, I'm a, like I said, I'm a nerd and I'm a geek about this. Um, I know a lot of stuff. I'm not going to toot my own, but I know a lot of stuff, but um, I don't know everything. And um, as a coach, I don't think you should have an ego as a coach. Um, you have to worry about the athlete first. And if you have an ego, you don't want to change your ways so that it hurts the athlete at the end of the day. And um, so if I don't know something, I'll ask. Um, if they need help, if they think my training is doing wrong, I ask them what you think I, you need today. And I actually ask them what they need. And um, and so whatever they need help on, I'll figure it out and get, get it done. Um, but I'm actually hurdles are actually my favorite events to coach now. So it's gonna be honest with you. 400 hurdles, 110s, 100s. So that's my favorite events to coach. And um, I fell in love with coaching the hurdles. It's the best event out there. Uh, uh, hurdles <laughs> all the way, man. I love them all, but hurdles. My very first ever email address was hurdle love at Hotmail. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. that's, I was very proud when I got that one yeah. uh, way back in the day. So you mentioned ego and ego is an interesting thing, right? Because mm -hmm. initially when people hear ego, it's automatically in the negative, right? Because ego is bad, yeah. but ego is not bad, right? Ego. No, 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 never, never, never bad. E well, not, not never. <laughs> there, <laughs> you know, there's people who have bad ego, right? But but ego is tied to self-worth and self-esteem and yeah. mm -hmm. um, motivation. Like, do I continue to try to get better or not? Or do I sit now? Bad ego is, or do I sit on my laurels and I know everything? You can't tell me anything. You know, that, that's where bad ego exactly. is. Right? Bad one, yeah. you, you mentioned growing up as an athlete about your ego. Uh, you said it several times and not, not in a bad way. And I, and I do believe yeah. we've talked about, uh, if you, you want to hear a little bit more in-depth conversation, go listen to the Cameron Babb episode of the Gill Connections podcast, where we talked about processing uh, information as an athlete it has to be selfish because you have to turn it into yeah. a fast sprint time or whatever event exactly. versus as a coach you now process the same information a coach can be mm -hmm. telling you a mentor coach can be telling you the same things you heard as an athlete but now as a coach you're processing that and how do i flow that out of me to athletes so it's, it's a different type of ego i'm still trying to learn and become better but it's in a different capacity selfishly as an athlete and again i don't mean that in a bad way you have to be if you're going to be a great athlete if you're going to be an athlete i think you have to be selfish in that respect uh versus a coach selfless i have mm -hmm. to take the information to learn and transfer it to an athlete how do you you know you're still at a young age you're not that mm -hmm. far removed from being the athlete whether it's bobsledding mm -hmm. or uh, um, uh professional running collegiate running 10 18 etc you're not that far removed how are you processing switching the ego from selfish meaning I'm at 10, 18. Well, I got to do everything I can. It means I got to block out a lot of stuff to run sub 10. If I'm ever going to make a meal out of this thing, actually yeah. make a career, right. Versus now you're a coach. 
Now you're trying to, how do I take kids to 10, 18 and faster, but process it through me? How, how are you, that's, those are two different stages of ego. How are you processing that at, at such a young age and such a early part of your career? At first it was difficult. Um, I still wanted to be the athlete mentality. So I tell everybody all the time, I have two egos. So my regular, my Philip Redrick is me. I'm a Leo, so I'm a laid back guy. I'm just laid back, chill. But my personality on the track is totally different. I turn the switch on and that's where King, my nickname comes in at. Mm -hmm. I'm the King guy, I'm, I'm egotistic. I'm, I'm trying to intimidate you before I run. I'm trying to do all these things to beat you. And so I might be out there a little bit when it comes to track. So on the tra coaching wise, I'm the same track guy, but I'm just toned it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still passionate about it. I'm still hung about it. But um, I actually listen to my athletes more as a coach. And I don't have an ego as a coach because um, it's about the athlete. If I'm stuck in my ways, the athlete never gets better. And I never get better. And I'm stuck in my way. And so um, if I don't know it, like I said, if I don't know it, if I, if I think my athlete needs more stuff, I'll ask them. And so it just, um, it, it, you have to turn it down a little bit as an athlete. As an athlete, like I said, you just go 100% into it. As a coach, you actually have to listen to people. Listen more and stop trying to do you the whole time. Mm. That's interesting. You, you seem to do, you seem to be very affable and have a lot of friends. Like when I see mm -hmm. around and I see responses to your Twitter and things like that, there's a, uh, an abundance of positive, uh, not just Cricketsville. No one's like replying at all to your stuff. Right. And things like oh, that. Yeah. So you seem very affable. Have you, but you, but you, you, you're very strong willed. You mentioned being a Leo, which I'm a Leo as well. We have a lot. Oh, got friends now, man. Yeah, this is really weird, actually. Uh, but, but, but you, so you have this, uh, this personality, this strong yeah. personality, this outgoing personality, but you seem to be pretty affable in the sense of having friends and stuff like that. Do, mm -hmm. do coaches, have you ever noticed, and sometimes this is hard, right? Because it's self-awareness, but have you ever noticed coaches kind of shying away from you? Because they're like, yeah, I don't want to talk to this guy. He's the king. You know, he's got this ego. Have you ever noticed that? Oh, trust me. Um, it's since I was running track in college, um, it's always been like that. They they, they assume the way because the way I act on track that I'm a bad guy or um obnoxious or is the egotistic guy. But if you actually talk to me, like most coaches talk to me, they realize that oh, Philip, you're just a lay, lay back guy. You um have fun, you laugh, and you're not really like that uh, like you are. And um, it's crazy. It happens all the time. Like on track, they're like you're mean, you're e you mean person, blah blah blah. Because my face, I have the ego, I have for when I'm on the track, and then off the track, I'm a totally different person. Like I tell it all the time. And so most coaches like, I don't know about this guy, but they never talked to me before. Yeah. So if you actually talk to me and actually get to know me, you'll actually be um, like, oh man, he's really cool. I can't have to go have a drink with him. He's, he's a good guy. Um, so one funny story, um, summer track this past year in the AAU Junior Olympics, track barn, track barn Carl. Mm -hmm. He came up to me, he texted me and said, I want to meet you today, Philip. I said, okay, that's fine. He came up to me and like, dude, you're not like I thought you were. I thought you were going to punch me. <laughs> well, why did he want to meet you then? He's exactly. like, you know, I, I, I want to get punched today. I'm going to reach out to this guy. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you're not like I thought you were. You're a really laid back guy and you're cool. And I was like, yeah, most coaches don't understand that. They, they see me on the track and they say, oh, he, he looks mean. I'm not going to say nothing to him. He's one of those people that are out there. I'm not really that guy. I'm passionate. They take my passion as anger or aggression, which is not. I'm mm -hmm. passionate about what I do. I take this 100% serious. Um, I want to be great. I want my athletes to be great. Everything I do in life, I try to be the best at. I don't care if I'm the janitor. I'm trying to be the best janitor in the world. Mm. So I'm trying to be the best coach in the world. I'm trying to be the best recruiter in the world. I don't care if I'm at Fort Scott or Texas. I want to be the best in the world at what I do. So I take it serious. It's funny. And um, I'm passionate about it. It's funny because Carl, I would describe the exact opposite of you. He looks like he's laughing all the time and he oh, yeah. is laughing <laughs> all the time. Yeah, I mean that in the best way. He's the most affable guy in the whole world. Love yeah. him to death. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So you mentioned recruiting. What I love about mm -hmm. JUCO coaches and athletes <clears throat> is it's a very unique situation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to say most of the time, but a lot of the time our athletes are coming to JUCO because of like we mentioned with uh, your example, right? Messing around in high school, not realizing, oh, wow, I've actually got to do some academics as well as run fast, things like that. So it's kind of second chance you, if you will, right? That's the mm -hmm. whole Netflix show, which Netflix totally should do last chance right. you at fort scott oh it would be the best show on, come TV. on. Yeah, yeah they yeah. need to come and see what we're doing here it's crazy <laughs> I, I, I have zero connections there so nothing's gonna happen oh but man i thought you a plug man come they on should. They, should. they should they should they should they should so as a juco coach you're not only recruiting um in a in a vast variety right so you're looking for non-qualifiers maybe you're looking for qualifiers that just need another year or two of uh co co you know collegiate coaching to go to a quote-unquote bigger school or whatnot but at the same time 
coach. You're also that high school coach, meaning you're also trying to get your sophomores recruited, all right? You, you want to get move them on to a four year to receive a degree like you did, right? Talk to me about how are you, and you went through it as an athlete, how are you doing that as a coach? What, what are the uh, struggles that happen there? Um, actually, it's one of my favorite things to do to actually get my kids in and out. It's one of my favorite things to do. I can actually see them come in, and I told them when, they, when I'm recruiting them, I'm going to get you to D1 school. I'm going to get you to this school. And I actually see them coming, for, coming to light now. It's actually amazing. It's, it feels great. Um, it's really not that difficult for me. It's, it's actually fun. Like I said, it's fun. Um, the hard thing I see about high school, recruiting high school athletes, it's, it's um, sometimes the coaches or the parents believe Drico is beneath them. Mm. And that's the major thing. The, the kids are fine. They want to come. They love it here. When I have kids come and visit that go D1 schools, they want to actually come here. I'm, at, I'm on their last three choices. And mm. Versus you see Texas, Fort Scott, and Florida State sometimes. Mm. And it's crazy to see that, that we're even up in the conversation. I have D1 coaches, D2 coaches call me all the time and say, Philip, you're really everywhere. Everybody's talking about they're going to sign before Scott. And what are you doing different? It's just um, the parents and some of the other coaches understand that I don't recruit just for grades. So you might be a D1 qualifier and I'm going to recruit you. I kept, like I said, I think outside the box. If you look at our roster right now, about 85% of us are D1 eligible athletes when I recruit them. Wait, hold on. For real? Yes. I don't recruit like the regular junior college way they, that they assume that junior college is for. I changed the whole model. Oh yeah. Cause that, so that was one of the parts that I struggled a little bit when I was mm -hmm. coaching was I felt a little bit like a um, piranha maybe where uh -huh. you know, I'd, I'd asked to get grades. And as soon as I saw they were qualifiers, like PC yeah. you later. And I'm happy that they were qualifiers, mm -hmm. but it was like, uh, you're not coming here. Like I still remember uh, I was trying to recruit um, Tiffany Ross from Miami, you know, okay. 13, two or something out of high school and uh, I was like yeah it's like we're just a great alternative if she doesn't have the grades and mm -hmm. she's like well she's got good grades I'm like well some people think they got good grades and they really don't it's like do you mind you know sending me her transcripts and the yeah. counselor sent me her transcripts and she was so smart like mm -hmm. 3.8 or so I don't even remember but it was like there was no question she was gonna be qualified she ended up signing with South Carolina many 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 time all-american awesome person mm -hmm. etc but literally I remember getting I, I still remember this to the day uh, a fax machine you don't know what a fax is Philip. Uh, <laughs> the grades came across on the fax machine I look at her transcripts and I was like well not recruiting her anymore yeah but you, mm -hmm. did you did you say 85 percent of your team were D1, D1 qualifiers yeah, sir. So why? Don't take this the wrong way. You know where no, you're, I'm right? you're at Fort Scott why? versus Texas. Why is a kid signing, going to Fort Scott, Iola, Kansas? That's the same as Chinook, Kansas. So I, I know exactly where you're at. Come on now. Yeah. Versus going to uh, whatever school. It doesn't matter. Northwestern State, UC Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I guarantee you no one's turned down Troy University to go to Fort Scott because Troy University <laughs> is heaven on earth. But, um, but, but what, so why? 85%. So, I, I, like I said, like when I first got the job, I did something different from everybody else. Like, I, I can't compete with, like I said, Bartons or the South Plains. I can't, I can't compete with them with their international kids. We, we don't get any here. So, I can't compete with them that way. So, how can I be competitive? And, and you know, and so I started, I was like, why do I have to go out to kids with bad grades? Why do I have to do that? Why? Is, is it a rule that I have to? It's not. And um, so, my, my motto is go for kids that are uh, mid-major kids that want to go big time be power five. And that's my motto. Um, don't go in debt. Like I said, don't go in debt chasing your dream school. When you can come to Fort Scott for no money whatsoever out of your pocket, then leave with no debt and go to your dream school in two years when I develop you into a better athlete and you listen and do what you got to do, become a better athlete. I mean, and that's, so that's what the that's, motto was. That sounds good. It sounds but, good. But, but it's working. It's working. <laughs> I, I lose a couple. I, I lose a couple, but it's working. Do, do you actively not recruit non-qualifiers or is that just no, a small I, I, part of your recruiting no i still recruit non-qualifiers um I, like i said i still give you a chance um no problem with that at all but i recruit both it's hand in hand they go hand in hand that's i may be out of touch in thinking that you might be the quote unquote only one doing this and maybe like maybe my buddy eric vance is from south plains is going to call me up like hey man we're doing this stuff too uh but that seems from my experience of how i did it in juco that seems like, yeah. I, lo I love that you said, you know, do things differently, right? Like, yeah. um, I kind of had this motto, if your competitor's doing it, do the opposite. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't want to be like everybody else. So I love that exactly. you kind of came in, analyzed it, and we're like, all right, well, uh, this seems like I could go the same route everybody else is, or, but maybe I could try something different. Yeah. So like a 12 old girl, 12 old girl in Texas, right? She's not getting the power five office, right? But in JUCO, 12 old, that's pretty decent. And I can develop her into 11 second girl, right? 
and she has a 4.0 GPA, why would I not offer her a scholarship? You see what I'm saying? But, um, I, but isn't that kid getting offers from, um, I'm trying to think, great D2 schools, Ashland, Minnesota State, yeah. um, UC is. Davis, I think maybe. I might have just offended them. I'm not sure. But um, West Texas A&M. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, but still, but but you're, you're trying to find those kids that have the quote unquote big dreams of going power five. So they actually can. Yes. They can go power five or bigger universities. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest with you, I think I can, I'm the, I think I'm the best recruiting agent. If I was at Oregon, if I was at Austin, if I was in LSU, those kind of places, I can get those athletes, the number one athletes in America. That's what I think. If I get athletes coming to Fort Scott, Kansas, I can get them to come to those schools. And so my, again, you gotta have confidence as a coach. You actually gotta shoot your shot at those athletes. You can't just say, oh, because they've got good grades, I'm not gonna try. Mm -hmm. I tried and I got it and I'm like, oh man, it works, keep going. And so you actually gotta be confident as a coach, as a recruiter, believe in your product, believe in the standards that we have here from day one and um, it's working, we're winning. Like last last year, our team, women team, we had four girls from high school, they ran 1244, right, in high school. They took second in nationals in the 401, 50, I mean, 45, three, right? That'll took number two in D2. That'll took second in D2, top 16 in the nation in D1. Those four girls all ran 11 seconds last year. The, they all were 12 4. 12 4. L legit or like, yeah, they actually had 11 9 PRs, but you can show no, no, them no, the track. No, 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 11 9 PRs. 12 4, 12 3, 12 34, 12 44. Wow. And they all ran 11 seconds last year. So if you, I, I'm big on development. And right. so if I can develop you into an athlete, I watch you run, I'll see what I can do to you, I'll offer you a scholarship. And so, um, and I developed into four girls, 11 seconds now, and they all got D1 offers right now. Sure. And they you know, took second in nationals to South Plains, four freshmen, 12, four seconds, and now they're 11 seconds. So. Do, do all four return? They all four return, yes, sir. And we actually had two more freshmen that are actually good, better than them, high school PRs. So we're, we're, we're all right, man. <laughs> Look out. Build the fort, brick by brick. Build the fort. One, That's one, the motto. one kid at a time. One kid at a time. Uh, Philip, man. Um, that's awesome. I, I love that attitude. I love, I love your attitude of, um, I'm the best recruiter in the nation. I'm mm -hmm. a really good coach. Um, and I love that you seem to have this, uh, with that, this, okay, I need to continue to get better at yeah. my craft. Like, it's not just like, I'm oh, no. the best. And I I'm, think I, you know, yeah, yeah I, I love that attitude. That's, that's going to be really interesting to, you know, we got you here on the podcast so early in your coaching career, it's gonna be really interesting to see, you know, kind of five, 10, 15 years from now, mm -hmm. um, you know, how it's going and where you're doing, but I, I have a feeling it's, mm -hmm. it's going to go pretty well. <laughs> I just Thank have, you. have this feeling, man. I just have this Thank feeling. you. It's always um, been a fun ride. Yeah. I hope you're building the fort brick by brick somewhere. Who knows? You know what? I, I have no doubts. You're going to be at Texas one day. I know that's your dream school. So hey, just put that in there. Just put it, just put it out there. <laughs> that's right. I'm going to be in Austin one day going, Hey man, remember when we did that podcast way back in the day? We talked about this. That's going to be, yeah, that's gonna, right. I, I look forward to that right there. That, that's going to be my favorite part right there. Uh, man, I'm so thankful you would join us today. Uh, it's always interesting to learn people's different careers uh, and journeys in this career. And I love that, you know, you're really a, a rookie in this career. You're still very, yeah. very young in this career. Yeah. Um, I'm so thankful your openness and authenticity today of talking about, you know, screwing up in high school and mm -hmm. not getting the grades that you could have and should have mm -hmm. maybe gotten right. But I love that it's led you to the path through junior colleges as an athlete all the way out to Seattle. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just amazing. The bobsledding thing. Um, yeah. It's so cool, man. So I'm just so thankful for your, you know, being here and being open and honest and, and humble with us today. Thank you for having me. It's been a great show. Well, I hope that I have been one small part, that Gil has been one small part of building the fort right here, baby. Oh, yeah, There's this one little brick right here. <laughs> You're going on our record boards. <laughs> <laughs> Which, remember, he said he broke all the Neosho, right? He broke all my yeah. records that Neosho I coached record. out there, of course. All right. All right, Philip, man, thank you so much for being here today, man. I really do appreciate right. you. Thank you for having me.